welcome back to the Freelancers Tea Break, the short and sweet podcast you can enjoy whilst you're making a cuppa. Um, so this week I want to talk about the summer holidays and how I try and take August off generally. I don't take it off completely, largely because actually I find that very difficult to switch off from work completely. I really love what I do, really, really love it. So there are certain things I still do a bit of, but I do try for the most part to take August off, get ahead of things, which is why I'm actually recording this in early July. Um, I do a lot of batching to get ahead and I thought it might be useful to share some of the things I do to allow me to take that August off um, for the most part, but to basically have a lot more flexibility to spend with my son and to take some of the pressure off. And also I'm terrible for taking holidays. So although this isn't technically a holiday, um, it allows me to take that time off and wind down and relax. So I've got some notes here. These notes actually are from last year because this is one of my tricks is repurposing a little bit. So um, using content from previous years, updating it for each of the years, that saves me so much time. So there are certain things that will come out over August, which are possibly things that I have shared before, but I've updated them. And also because there might be a lot of new listeners, um, hopefully you'll find it really useful and for those of you that have listened for a long time it'll be a great refresh as well because sometimes we need to hear things a few times so the first thing I do is I make more of a push for sales in July so I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do yet but generally in July I have some kind of offer or sale or something that boosts sales um, especially around my course and things like that so I'm not having to um, offer the services live um, so in the past, that's been selling annual memberships at my freelance business lounge, which has been really good as well, because it means when that comes up, that comes up every year. So I get that little boost every year. So I would highly recommend that as a strategy if you have anything that's annual to have it to come up before times like summer holidays or Christmas or your quieter periods. So um, that's definitely I'm going to be exploring and looking at what I'm going to do. Um, some of my prices are going up soon, so I probably will do something around that as well. Um, but in July, running up to it so that I've got that little bit of boost of money to cover August. Um, secondly, I have a savings pot that I add to throughout the year um, that covers um, mainly childcare costs. Um, my son will be in um, an outdoor camp, well, like a, a summer camp um, twice a week. And partly because he loves it. There's so many wonderful activities they do. And then partly because I need that time as someone who has ADHD and who is an introvert, I really do need that time to recharge. And I will be doing a little bit of work during that time, but there'll be also other things I'll be doing during that time to uh, refill my cup. So um, the savings pot allows me to pay for that childcare. Um, and also a side note, if you are paying into childcare vouchers and you did that sort of all the way up to nursery, did you know that you can still use that after nursery for um, summer clubs and things like that, depending on if they accept it? Um, so I'll just mention that because it's not something everybody knows. So the savings pot really, really helps. Um, and I just tend to put money in every, every time, every month I put a little bit in, or if I have um, a bigger contract come in, I'll put a chunk in there. And it also covers day trips, things like that. The cost of snacks, because, oh my God, children do not stop eating. So um, yeah, all those kind of things. Next thing I've said here is I still do a little bit of work. For me, that's almost self-care for me because I love what I do. I love being able to write things, but I probably won't be doing, no, I won't be doing many podcasts in August because I will have pre-scheduled them all and batched them. Um, all my newsletters are pretty much all written. Um, social media wise, I meet up with my lovely lady, Laura, um, who we batch loads and loads of reels together. Um, so we record them in one day. Um, that's really, really helpful because then we have the content already done. So there is a lot of batching that goes on, but I will still be doing some emails um, and um, there are certain clients that I will still carry on with because I have that flexibility to do that and a little bit of that childcare. Um, so next one I've kind of covered already, but batching. Um, so I tend to start with newsletters first, so I know the bare bones of the content. 
and then from the newsletters that kind of decides the podcast co- content and then from the, the social media builds on that because we'll probably have one of the posts a week which is um something from the the podcast and then a couple of others based on awareness days or anything like that i might end up doing the odd ad hoc ad hoc, ad hoc <laughs> the odd ad hoc um real and things like that and i'll probably be on stories a little bit but it gives me a framework that i know there's still stuff going out there um and part of batching is yeah going back to previous content and thinking how can i refresh this how can i use the resources i already have to refresh it and bring that forward um which is this is you know what i've done with this episode um it's not a copy and paste i'm still re-recording in 2024 but it just helps me save a lot of time and be able to batch a bit more. Next, I let my clients know ahead of time. Um, the ones that I won't be working with in August, I let them know that I won't be around. Um, there are other ways to contact me. Um, or, or actually, if they need to contact me, drop me an email and I'll come back to them after that period. Um, so it's really important to let your clients know and give them a good amount of notice. Um, it just makes everything so much easier. And also give them a nudge, but don't give them a nudge on Friday when you're finishing up. Give them a nudge on the Monday um, so that it allows if they're going to go, oh, actually, can you do this big project beforehand? First of all, it means they're not panicking if you say no. Um, but it also means you're not getting something on a Friday afternoon because they've suddenly thought of something. So give them a bit of an extra nudge that way and then finally my out of office will go on um and my out of office will have frequently asked questions so if somebody emails me it can come back and say um i'm not around much in august but if it's any of these questions um please find the answer below so are you interested in coaching are you interested in collaborations and it will have the details and most of those answers are on my website as well so i can point them towards that um but also if they want to book in like a call or a discovery call they can do that i've also updated my calendar so that they can't book in. um but uh yeah it means that they can book in for like early september um so having that frequently asked questions in my out of office is really helpful um and just makes my life a lot easier so that's some of the ways basically that i try and juggle it and there's a couple of practical ways as well like play dates and i'm, I'm organizing a few play dates with local uh, other small business owners so that we can kind of one of us can keep an eye on the kids while the other one does a bit of work and then swap so that's going to help if there's anything that urgent that comes up how urgent are things that they can't wait through August when lots of people are off anyway? And I intend on doing lots of relaxation and reading and lots of other lovely things instead. So I'd love to know if there's anything you use um, to allow you to take some time off or if you're going to implement any of these. Um, you can find out more information in the um, show notes. And I hope you have a wonderful freelance week. And if you're taking the summer holidays off, I hope you have a lovely break.